Eyewitness News is back in Cyrildine a year later and things have changed significantly. Back then, we had no coronavirus cases and now we have about 1.5 million reported COVID-19 cases. Businesses have taken a huge knock and their bills are piling up. On top of that, it's a second time in a row that they can't celebrate Chinese New Year. We are here to give you an update. Last year, we spoke to a restaurant owner who said that his business struggled because of the stigma attached to COVID-19. Now, his business is struggling even further as he has not been able to pay rent for months. You know, now you see, this, uh, this corona, you know, make big trouble, you know. Everybody is scared, you see. Up and down, you know, go this year marks the second year the community will also not be celebrating the Chinese New Year. With it's really disappointing for our community. It's the highlight of our community. It's the highlight of, of, of Chinese people around the world. Um, usually there's dragons, lion and dance, fireworks, a real celebration and celebration of, of different cultures and of life. But what we have done is we've uh, sought to be innovative. And this year, uh, during New Year's, we're actually, we've partnered with uh, Chinatowns from across the world. And we're going to have a, a virtual event um, that is, will, be, will be broadcast live. With the discovery by local scientists of the 501YV2 variant, it seems that the country itself is facing discrimination, as the variant is being called the South African variant. But the South Africa, they, the, the China still scares South Africa, this, you see. That means that it's a high uh, 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 risk, risk place. You know? But this South African who frequents Cyril Dean cautions against discrimination of South Africa and the Chinese community. Nobody knows, you know, it's, it's a problem for everybody. So all of us, we need to work together and fight uh, uh, this disease. Erwin Pon, chairperson of the Chinese Association in Gauteng, says things have improved for the community in terms of discrimination. I really think at that time there was a lot of misunderstanding, a lot of, uh, there wasn't a lot of information about really what it was, how people got it, etc, etc. So people stayed away. Over the past year people have learnt a lot more, especially here in South Africa. Um, schools, for example, media for that, for that matter. In the early days, media used to post mainly Asian pictures of Asians when they spoke about the virus. And that propagated the narrative that it was perhaps just a Chinese Asian virus and it could only affect them. The media, people, schools, etc. have changed. They've learned across this year um, and things are definitely getting better. We as a Chinese community, we got great support from other communities. But despite the progress, some discrimination remains a reality. Uh, um, a month ago, my kids and I we were in the park walking our dogs and uh, uh, these gentlemen drove past and stopped the car and called us, hey, COVID, uh, to my five-year-old and eight-year-old kid and then drove away. Discriminatory remarks against the Chinese community also recently trended on social media after Jean May Harvard, a Chinese South African, was elected as an ANC member of parliament. So we were celebrating the fact that now we have a Chinese person in member of parliament that can really be a voice for the Chinese community. The Chinese people have had a long history here in South Africa. My ancestors came over 100 years ago uh, to South Africa and we see ourselves as South Africans. And we were definitely saddened by the negative comments that we saw on social media. Really not attacking her as a person, but attacking the whole community as a whole. Chinese people go back to China, you don't belong here. Um, then going back to the virus again, saying that uh, it's a Chinese virus, first your Chinese virus kills our comrades and then you put a Chinese person now taking over. So really having really these uh, uh, discriminatory remarks, uh, xenophobic remarks against the Chinese community and some of them really not recognizing that Chinese people are actually also humans. We really condemn those type of racist, racist, uh, xenophobic behavior and really um, ask the people to be more tolerant 
to people of different colors, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, people that just look different to you and be more respecting. While problems persist, the imminent COVID-19 vaccination program appears to be offering some hope to the community. I'm just waiting, maybe injection after it becomes good, the situation will be good, you know.